This episode is brought to you by the Weather Channel app. Did you know the app can help you forecast more than just the weather? With allergy tracking and flu risk mapping. So you know when to stay inside and load up on podcast, As well as air quality and UV indexing. So you know when to get outside, load up on sunscreen and podcast. Forecast more of what you love with the Weather Channel app. Hi, my name is Travis McVeigh. I'm an anesthesiologist from Dallas, Texas. I host a podcast called Thank You Notes at Ars Longa Media. Showing gratitude to people just makes me feel good, and I want to share the practice of thank you notes with everybody who listens. I write thank you notes to people and then bring them on the show to read it to them. Past guests have included my high school teachers, my friends, other physicians, and a couple of internet celebrities. I will also be doing episodes that explore the science behind gratitude practices to demonstrate to everybody the actual tangible benefits of practicing gratitude. Listen everywhere you get podcasts and check out the extras on my social media accounts. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the Inside the Boards podcast, the podcast dedicated to helping you learn to think like a question writer so you can study smarter, not harder, and succeed in medical school. And now here's your host, Patrick Beeman. This episode is sponsored by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial by going to insidetheboards.com slash audible. You'll support the podcast while keeping up on your pleasure reading or listening to some lectures like I'm doing now. Right now, I'm listening to Professor Peter Vishton's Outsmart Yourself, Brain-Based Strategies to a Better You from the Teaching Company's Great Courses series, learning insights from neuroscience to hack the human brain with practical evidence-based strategies for living a better life, like the evidence-based way doing nothing can overcome procrastination or how to overcome your brain's tendency towards instant gratification to increase the likelihood of achieving goals. Welcome to part two of our special bonus episode with the one and only Conrad Fisher. In this episode, Dr. Fisher provides a whirlwind tour through drug development over the past especially two years so that you can get current in under 30 minutes. Check out insidetheboards.com slash episode 023 to learn more about Dr. Fisher, view some more of his advice on studying for the boards, and to get more info about his MedQuest platform, which you can check out at medquestreviews.com. And don't forget, leave a review of the podcast, send your screenshot to podcast at insidetheboards.com. You'll be entered to win this episode's giveaway from MedQuest, thanks to Dr. Conrad Fisher. Dr. Fisher has prepared a little example uh, for us. So what do you have to teach us? Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Let's pimp out Patrick. Hello, oh, everybody man. out there in medical. How about there, everybody out there in medical education land? Let's get current. Now, if you think about it, the things that are the physical findings don't change. Gray, Turner's, and Cullen sign don't change because when Gray and Turner and Cullen were describing them, they were the same sorts of retroperitoneal hemorrhages and the same sort of periumbilical hematoma in the Cullen sign. So physical findings don't change. It was an S3 gallop 100 years ago. It's an S3 gallop now. But what changes pharmacology and some of the testing? So what is yabadabaduarone, abiraterone? I'll be happy if you even figure out what organ system it's from. It is, of course, the famous 1720 lyase. Remember, in the in the cholesterol nucleus, in the steroid nucleus, carbon 16 is attached to 15. Carbon 17 is attached to carbon 16. And, of course... It goes 15, 16, 17, then 20. And when you snip off a little bit of the 20 and the 21, we need to snip off that little bit at the end. What do you turn it into? 
an androgen. How do you circumcise? What's a circumcision for your steroid nucleus? Snipping off a little bit at the end. Everywhere, okay? So, okay, how about this one? Alvimopan. When you said Alvimopan, I thought to myself, what in the world? Alvimopan. Ever heard of this? I have not. Well, it's because it's a brand new drug. It's only been out since 2008. Ha, 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 ha. It also has to do with something that you never do. It has to do with people who are post-operative. Have you ever been with a post-operative patient? As an OBGYN, I have. I know that because you're constantly struggling to remind people, OBGYN, we're more than just contraception. That's absolutely so true. Most people, you know, a lot of people don't even realize that gynecology is an operative specialty. So what happens is with alvimopan is when you cut someone, what can you do to restore their bowels to moving? Let's say they have an ileus and the calcium is normal, the sodium is normal, the fluids are normal, the calcium, the sodium, the glucose is normal, the magnesium is normal, the calcium is normal, the sodium is normal, the magnesium is normal. What can you do to restart that bowel, Patrick? Give them alvimopan? Alvimopan reverses an ileus, reverses an ileus. My goodness, there's actually a drug that reverses ileus? That's right. I do believe I know what this drug is vaguely because it was October 2008 when I had my general surgery clerkship as a medical student, and there was some talk about this uh, from my, my attending at the time. I don't think he was so you using recognize it. it like an auditory hallucination from the past. Kind Not of. sure who told you. It's a voice in your head. Who told you? I can't name them. Let's try this one. Carfilzomib. This is a proteasome inhibitor, and proteasome inhibitors are the latest drug for myeloma. No more having your hair lost with melphalan. No more having your uh, making chicharrones de cojones, the flash frying, making testicle pacoras making falafels out of your testicles with combination chemotherapy. We use proteasome inhibition to be able to be targeted on our therapy. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's do something else. Now, we know that there's a lot of drugs, like, for instance, for the groin ecologists, why is the vagina just like a mouth? Bacteria? Yes, bacteria and mixed flora. Mixed flora, Okay. And so you've heard of ampicillin sulbactam. It's unison. Yep. You've heard of amoxicillin clavulonic acid. Why that is augmentin. Tricarcillin clavulonic acid. That's timentin. You've heard of piperacillin tazobactam, which is unis uh, which is zosin. But what about ceftazidine? Did we know that there are now cephalosporins combined with beta lactamase inhibitors? The whole idea is that I can make you completely current in 40 minutes. Only going to do it even easier than that, because this is basically what you, if you throw this with your gut, it is, the re, the, this with, this with a flagell is zosin. Cephalosporins with beta-lactamase inhibitors. You can become current in 30 minutes. You can become current in 30 minutes. Isn't that an amazing thing to think that you're halfway between the gutter and the stars? <laughs> and you're only half an hour away or 20 minutes away from destiny. Yes, cephalosporins are combined with beta-lactamase inhibitors. How about this one, Elbasphir and Grisoprevir? You're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong. What's it for? Well, I lost the presentation. You lost the presentation? Oh, you can't see this anymore? You're just saying that. To buy time so I can Google it? <laughs> exactly. Elbasphir, Grisoprevir. So Elbasphir and Grisoprevir are used to treat what infection? It's hepatitis C. The answer for everything tonight is hepatitis C. No matter what I ask you, the answer is hepatitis C. Whether it's a drug, a test, or whether you've been run over by a car or someone shot you, you were shot by hepatitis C. If only the boards worked like that. Exactly. Well, they join letopasphir and sulfosfavir, and basically they are a once-a-day pill that gets rid of your hepatitis C. Isn't that fantastic? It is. That is fantastic. Yes, they are protease inhibitors. You are 90 days away from cure, cure, cure.
Is that is that all um, virotypes for, of hepatitis C? Almost, almost. That's velpatosphere. Velpatosphere is for all viral types. Okay. How about this one? Degarelix. Ever heard of that one? I have not, but I'm thinking hepatitis C. Very good. It's for prostate cancer and probably breast cancer too. What a great name. Wait, Firm. you tricked me. I did trick you. Firm a gone. Firm a gone. That probably suggests one of its side effects. Look, there has been GNRH agonists around for years. An astrazole, letrozole. There's been there have been GNRH luperlide, gazerolin, luperlide, gazerolin have been around for a long time. GNRH agonists. But this is the first GR and NRH antagonist. So there's no bump up initially in the hormone levels. No bump up in the LH and FSH. Isn't that fantastic? That is fantastic. Which is the only form of acute hepatitis that has a treatment. I think I'm going to go with hepatitis C. Correct. Hepatitis C is the only one. And why that's really important is because 80% go on to becoming chronic. What is declinosphere used for? I would say it's used for hepatitis C, Dr. Fisher. You are a genius. Now, everyone has a genus, but you are a genius. <laughs> Thank you. For HIV, let's change the subject. Okay. You treat everyone, no matter how high the T cell count is, and you combine two nucleosides, two nucleosides, and... Two nucleosides and integrase inhibitors. Here are the integrase inhibitors. Dolutegravir, raltegravir, LVtegravir. Let's say them again. Dolutegravir, raltegravir, LVtegravir. This is the standard of care in HIV. Two nucleosides and an integrase inhibitors. What's Cobisistat? I'm pretty sure that's a made-up drug. Looking, it be, well, while you weren't looking... The integrase inhibitors became the standard of care, and they have replaced the protease inhibitors, but only the last three years, three years, three years. Cobisistat is a medication that bumps up the dose, the levels of the other medications, blocks the metabolism of the other HIV medications. Awesome. So this is the standard of care, m tenofovir, and an integrase inhibitor with cobisistat. Amtricitabir, tenofovir, and an integrase inhibitor with cobisistat. Four drugs in one pill. Wow, that is very convenient. Now, here's something new. Idarucizumab, because we should not be using warfarin for almost anybody anymore. Warfarin's going the way of the rotary telephone, black and white television, CD players, albums. Remember albums? That's where warfarin should go. Warfarin is like buying an album or vinyl records. Well, still, there will be maybe about 5% of people kind of like hipsters nowadays who probably seek out rotary telephones and black and white TVs and albums. <laughs> and there's still 5% of patients that need warfarin. And so, and warfarin's only indications is from metal valves and mitral stenosis. That's it. Metal valves and mitral stenosis. So when I'm taking my step two or step three exam and... Uh, I get a choice of which blood thinner to use uh, for this patient who has a metal valve or a, okay, mitral stenosis, AFib, it's warfarin. Yep. In other words, atrial fibrillation, DVT, pulmonary embolus, your answer is either dabigatran or a 10A inhibitor. Okay. With the exception of metal valves and mitral stenosis. Got it. And this stuff, idorucizumab, is the wave of the future. This is a drug that now is available to instantly reverse dabigatran or pradaxa. Isovucanazole. It sounds like an antifungal. It is an antifungal, and you know your azoles. I do. You have flucanazole, cotrimazole, itracanazole, and you clearly right away say, I know that. That man is talking about an azole. But which azole is it? It's isovucanazole. So this is for aspergillus and what's that other black stuff that grows in the roof of your mouth when you have an out of control acidotic diabetic mucormycosis mucormycosis or rhizopus the out of control diabetic methyl naltrexone yes it sounds like naltrexone of course it is sounds like a methylated naltrexone you're a genius exactly it's basically non-absorbed 
naltrexone, non-absorbed naltrexone for people who have opiate-induced constipation. Okay. So methyl naltrexone. Let's do this. This is a brand new mechanism of drug. I know it says monoclonal antibody because it says MAB at the end, monoclonal antibody. But this, I don't, we don't teach a lot of specific chemotherapy for step two and step three, but we do this one because it's a brand new class. Mm -hmm. And the brand new class is something that is a programmed cell death inhibitor. You see, an immortalized cell in the human body, when you have a cell that doesn't know when to die, it's called a cancer cell. This drug basically tells cells that it's time to die, tells them it's time to die. Program cell death is when you and I know that we've gotten old and it's time to go home and die and not stay alive on a ventilator intubated for the next six weeks. So nivolumab leaves the normal cells alone and attacks cancer cells and says it's time to die because cancer is a vampire. It's a cell that says, I'm never going to die. I'm going to go into my coffin during the daytime and I will come out and eat you at night. But this drug restores the ability to die to cancer cells. So what's it being used in? Oh, it is being used right now mostly in melanoma, some in non-small cell lung cancer. But these are the first two, but there'll be many, many others. So you saw carfilzomab, the proteasome inhibitor, nivolumab, programmed cell death stimulator, targeted therapy that doesn't kill surrounding tissue. That's the wave of the future. I feel, I feel like I uh, just went through um, uh, a six-week block of pharmacology in second-year med school learning uh, all these new drugs. Well, the whole idea is that I uh, should be able to make you current in an area in 40 minutes or 30 minutes. In other words, the whole idea is you don't need to know an hour presentation on each of these. You don't need an hour grand rounds in each of them or a 50-minute grand rounds. Hepatitis C, yes, telaprevir is off the market. Bocetprevir is off the market. Look, hepatitis C, the reason that the drug companies get approval to use this drug for $80,000 is because to get their drug development costs back, this has got a 98% predicted cure rate. So therefore, you've got to be able to say, well, it's, you're not going to be on this drug for the next 20 years of your life. You're not even going to be on it for 20 weeks. Wow. That you is be cured right away. Thank you. You see that. Oh, by the way, that's Socrates. Socrates is, says the uh, sense of wonder is the beginning of philosophy. The that was actually of... Aristotle in the metaphysics. But don't disagree with me in public. God damn it. I'm Conrad Fisher, the great and powerful Conrad. I can edit it out, but I probably won't because it's entertaining. There you go. There's moral relativism for you. I know it's not the truth, but it is entertaining. Or rid of And you know why it sounds like vancomycin? Because it's vancomycin that lasts for 10 days. One dose that lasts for 10 days. Holy crap. What this is for, and again, I feel like, hello, today's daily specials are, can I tell you about our daily special for rid of Anson? This is a drug that you want to discharge someone home. They've had MRSA bacteremia. You want to keep them in the hospital for 10 days. Or they have a wound infection. You want to keep them in the hospital for 10 days. So you give them this as a one, do one single dose, and it's good for 10 days. Wow. And they go home, even for VRE. Wow. Pneumococcal vaccine, what's different about it? We do it in two stages. Pneumococcal vaccine, what's different about it? You get the 13 polyvalent, and then a year later, the 23. What if you already had the 23? Then a year later, you get the 13. That's but so simple. Third. So this is the, the greatest thing in vaccination the last couple of years, which is a way to cover everybody. So you give two pneumococcal vaccines, two of them. If you already had the 23, you get the 13. Ruxolotinib, it's not a monoclonal antibody, but it does inhibit things. You notice how it says Ruxolot inhib? Because it inhibits. What does it inhibit? The Janus kinase mutation. Janus kinase. That's why it's good for myelofibrosis, polycythemia vera, and plus, what a great name, the drug companies. The drug company got this down. Such a great Yeah, what, well, yeah. Like, so your, your, your impressionable 26-year-old medical student says, Dr. Beeman, what should I give this patient? And you go, jack off eye. <laughs> I mean, I wonder how they, they push that through. How do they push off Jankify? 
because people don't know how, they probably have people who don't know how to pronounce that. Secubitril. This is a brand new drug. This works by inhibiting nephrilicin. Nephrilicin is a brand new unique target, nephrilicin. Nephrilicin is, you inhibit nephrilicin to help just even get in the disease. Just name the organ. I'm thinking the kidney. Very good. Wonderful choice, sir. The heart. Who named this? This was inappropriately named. <laughs> yes. Secubitril is a nephr oh, nephrilicin, exactly. You add it to an ARB or balsartan, and it lowers mortality. I just started using it this week because I had a guy who was not eligible yet for a transplant. He had a 12% ejection fraction. He was already on a beta blocker or a diuretic. He was already on spironolactone. He's already on a statin and aspirin. He's already on an ARB because he couldn't tolerate ACE inhibitors. And he's so sick, he couldn't even make it up the one flight of stairs to his house, even though he's only 50 years old. And I added Secubitril to this guy this week. Nephrilithin inhibitor. The key issue is both Ivabradine and Secubitril lower mortality. And that's the thing that the test tests the most, what lowers mortality. Now, the other part about it is morally, there's a great moral strength in saying, I'm as current as this year. In less than 40 minutes, I have absorbed a year's worth of drug development. And because some people worry about, oh, is this too current to be on the test? No, because not one of these drugs is newer than two years old. That that was going to be my question to you, that... that Okay, these are, quote, new drugs, so when are they going to show up on the boards? I embargo the data for two years. That makes a lot What's of sense. What's the most accurate test for hereditary spherocytosis? Most accurate test? Probably a genetic study. The most accurate test for spherocytosis is not osmotic fragility. It used yeah. to be osmotic fragility. Osmotic fragility was discontinued. Eosinophen, eosinophen, Five malleamide is the most accurate test for spherocytosis. Can you believe it? Osmotic fragility is out. Now, the other thing that we have to remember here is this is an alphabetical order. We're already up to the Ds, and it hasn't even been 20 minutes. Tadizolid is like linezolid, but it's linezolid without – what is the most adverse, common adverse effect of linezolid? The most common adverse effect of linezolid is linezolid suppresses levels of your – Platelets. So linezolid without platelet problems is tadizolid. Okay. Linezolid without platelet problems is tadizolid. One of the things people have to remember that on step one, step two, and step three, the thing that is tested on all three steps is adverse effects. So for instance, you're a psychiatrist. You're not starting this drug. You don't have to know when to start it. But you do have to know that if the patient comes to you and you're the primary care provider as a psychiatrist, and all of a sudden the person has a platelet problem, you have to know which drug it is. Every uh, specialty needs to know adverse effects. Even if you don't initiate the drugs, you need to know the adverse effects of all of them. Questions, Patrick? Yes, sir. You touched before upon... Um... ACE inhibitors, probably, I would say, a high-yield adverse effect of an ACE inhibitor to remember, and a reason for which people probably switch to an ARB is, now I'm pimping you, sir. Oh, cough. Bradykinin increase. I knew that was easy, but there was this little part and hope with me. Hyperkalemia. That, <laughs> that hoped you would misspeak or something, and, and I could yes, have Yes, that's why, that's why ARB and Secubitrol was developed. Got to know these so adverse effects. So to do glutide, we're already in the T's. If this is a GLP agonist, glucagon-like peptide agonist, and it's for slowing down the bowel, slowing down the bowel in short bowel syndrome. Ah. It inhibits bowel motility. Wow. Televancin. Well, if oritavancin lasted for one week and covered MRSA, if aritavancin and dalbavancin lasted for one week and covered MRSA, if aritavancin and dalbavancin lasted for one week and inhibited the cell wall, like a week's worth of vancomycin, why not have televancin when you can have two weeks' worth of coverage at twice the price? It becomes like a, mil a military budget. Why have one when you can have two at twice the price? That's <laughs> no comment. 
Oh, you're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong. But we're already up to the Vs. You have severe, a patient with severe inflammatory bowel disease, been having recurrent episodes of pain, diarrhea, and fever. The patient's on mesalamine and uh, steroids, which is that budesonide is basically like a, a non uh, non systemic effect. Steroid budesonide is like a cream. It's like a cream. It's inhaled, and you could use it on the bowel. Azathioprine, which is immunosuppressant, and ada ala la abemab. But your patient is still symptomatic despite being on a 5 ASA derivative, on being on budesonide, on being on azathioprine, on being on adalizumab. Adalizumab, what should we use? Vedolizumab. Yeah, I would not have got that. Adding infliximab to adalimumab adds nothing. Adding sulfasalazine to mesalamine is like wearing two bras, one on the inside and one on the outside. You don't need to, and you look funnier. Azathioprine and 6 mercaptopurine are identical drugs. And balsalazide is an identical 5-ASA derivative to mesalamine. But vedolizumab is an alpha integrin inhibitor. It works in drug-resistant inflammatory bowel. Wow. There's another one of these alpha integrin inhibitors that we use for multiple sclerosis. Do you know what that one's called? That's not the name of it, no. It's called natalizumab. And natalizumab gave progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. So if you have natalizumab minus PML, natalizumab minus PML is vedolizumab. Can you imagine the specificity of this? It inhibits lymphocytes just in Peyer's patches. What a specific, targeted, local effect. Yes. In the military, yes. it'd be called uh, a, a lily pad. Isn't that a term, a lily pad? Just a little local area of activity. Why set up a whole base? Why inhibit everything? Just inhibits Peyer's patches just in your bowels. Hmm. So it controls autoimmune disease without systemic adverse effects. Beautiful. Wow. Then ib. I know it inhibits things. And what does it inhibit? It inhibits the BRAF mutation. This is another super breakthrough drug in melanoma. Why lose your hair with all that poison when you can have a targeted therapy? You can see we're already at the Vs. And that shows you that we are so close to being excellent. We're only a few minutes away. This was not a dumbed down, shortened, moron version just for you or your viewers or people at Inside the Boards. This is the way to show you you're only an hour away from excellence. It's not as far as you think. And that's why we want to say, who has gone far for I would go farther? And who has been bold and true? for I would be the boldest and truest being of the universe. And who shall sing hymns fit for the earth? For I am mad with a devouring ecstasy to sing joyous hymns fit for the whole earth. So when we study the pharmacology of the last two years like this, we are so close to knowing everything. We just think it's farther away than it really is. So you've just been in service. You now know A to Z. Here's the last drug, Vorapaxar. This is an antiplatelet drug for peripheral arterial disease. Hmm. And this is the drug for people who are already on aspirin, already on a statin, already on celostazole, and still having symptoms of pain. So there you have it. From A to Z, and you are now current, and it only took you a minute. Isn't that fantastic? That is fantastic. Thank you. We're so close, man. So close. So that's the story out there at Inside the Boards. The idea is that we want to tell you that you're not as far away as you think. And since you're making all this investment of time to be excellent, why not go all the way? It's not like having to look at uh, non-stress tests from OBGYN. <laughs> Well, that's easy. That only takes that takes even less than half an hour to learn. I can't learn. I have an objection to it. I can't. It's like a uterine encephalogram. Uterine electroencephalogram. <laughs> a, a UEG. It's a UEG. Thank you, Doctor Fisher, the one and only Conrad Fisher. 
My pleasure to be here, Patrick. You're a sincere and fine fellow, and I'm glad to participate with you for sure, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks to James from Two O'Clock Courage for letting us use an excerpt from The Valentine Blast Furnace off the 2016 album Missalette. Two O'Clock Courage is the best band you've never heard of. You can listen to their music on Spotify and follow them on Twitter at Two O'Clock Courage. That's at the number two o'clock courage. Thanks, guys, for letting us use the song. We really appreciate it. Inside the Boards is in no way affiliated with the United States Medical Licensing Examination, Comprehensive Osteopathic Medical License Examination, National Board of Medical Examiners, the National Council of State Boards of Nursing, National Board of Osteopathic Medical Examiners, or any other licensing or examination body. All exam names and other trademarks are the property of the respective trademark owners. Content discussed during the program is the property of inside the boards or the attributed trademark owner and may not be reproduced without permission from the appropriate entity. Inside the Boards fully adheres to the respective policies on irregular behavior outlined by the aforementioned credentialing bodies.